Alright guys, welcome back to you Valorant News. Just three teams remain at Masters Tokyo. A couple of incredible series just went down this morning between Fnatic and EG and then NRG and PaperX. No something, but no problem for these guys. Some with a mega misplay that many people are talking about that could well have spelled the end of that series far earlier than it did. But very much on Twitter, your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. First of all, the brand new agent is coming very soon. Female agent. This is what some of the pros have to say on it. Lots to them mention something like mobile sentinel something like you know map control so we'll see what happens here but the agent's name is going to be deadlock apparently so i think there was a code name that came out the other day but that's what's happening so i guess stay tuned for further updates on that more than likely come tomorrow and then the grand finals we're going to see more on this one also this from kang kang right who bowed out of the tournament and you know he gave a nice statement to his fans and everything because yeah this guy has been definitely i mean i think he probably is right now the face of chinese fps games to be honest in all the different and, um, you know, across the different esports. So very exciting stuff. I think he's got a bright future ahead of him. With any luck, he'll be back in business and we'll see what Edward can do come champions. We know that yesterday we saw NRG Artis. He wasn't particularly convinced this team could keep up their level, but we'll see. Hopefully they can. And also this confirmation yesterday from something confirming, as unfortunate as it is, that he's not going to be there for Masters Tokyo. This was, I think, inevitable at this point. I get a lot of questions about visas from everyone, but unfortunately I can say that I am 100% unable to go to Masters as Toko. PRX and I will do our best to prepare for champions in LA. Thanks for the support that W gave you, says. So, uh, yeah, nice statement. It's unfortunate, right, with something, all the rumours over the past week or so, whether he was going to be there, whether he wasn't. I think it was clear for some time it wasn't going to happen. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, the whole Japanese visa department people, it wasn't going to work. Will he be able to go to America for, you know, to LA for champions? Hopefully, yes. They've got plenty of time to figure it out. Of course, as a Russian player, it's going to be naturally somewhat more complicated but um hopefully they can find a way through but anyway something not there in Tokyo which means that for sure they knew and could lock in their roster right with cigarettes as their sixth man stepping in as their fifth man for the tournament and I think many people had and for good reason paper X significantly lower in their power rankings without something on the team and definitely justifiably so but with roughly 10 days of practice they are getting better and better and we'll see what they did here in a few minutes time because it is honestly a remarkable story we'll also mention quickly as well that it was not too far from this time last year where Shroud joined Sentinels for the last chance qualifier. Now we don't exactly know. There are rules in place as to what changes you can make and you can't really make any changes going into the LCQ but it is possible. I mean we saw what Heretics have done with we believe um, you know Ben J Fishy joining over there instead of Zeke because they got rid of Zeke and then they needed like an emergency substitute and it feels like there are ways to make changes if you really want to. Not saying that any of the teams right now in the Americas will say, all right, Shroud, he's our man. But in fairness, Sentinels didn't make the change from last year and it was very entertaining. So Zelt is like, look, you want to join Cloud9 for LC Curate Shroud? Like, let's run it back. It's kind of like how we saw last year with that Sentinels roster with these guys making their appearances. There's also this big news that was coming out as well with team skins practically confirmed now, which is um, definitely a big deal for the esports in general, having in-game team branded skins and Leo Farrier actually revealed this in a recent interview that next year indeed we're introducing for the first time team branded skins in game and all of that is monetized via microtransactions. So I think this is probably about time at this point to be honest but to have items in the game based on the certain teams. We've had the champions pack and this type of stuff before that the sales of it then get filtered down to the team and eventually to hopefully the players even though not always the case I think for some dodgy organizations out there especially in the pre-franchise days. Nowadays not so much of an issue and the idea that teams like Sentinels and others can actually monetize their branding in the game. There is always a debate about this because some teams are more popular than others, right? Straight up. So that team you would think deserves to get rewarded more. Let's say, you know, the money that is earned by the microtransaction sales of the team branded skins, does that go into a pot and then get distributed to every team equally? Or does it get distributed specifically based on the percentage sold to the team? So for example, Sentinels would certainly want that to be the case but um, there might be some relationship where the money is filtered a little bit more evenly to try and make sure that these teams can actually, all of them can actually stay afloat, despite the fact that I'm sure the big organizations wouldn't be happy with that and would want um, to ensure they get their fair share as they would see it. So that's always a debate that will be had, but I think this is a good thing in general for the eSport because fundamentally, if anyone wants to make money in this, microtransactions are kind of the way that it has to be done. Also, we'll mention quickly that officially NRG yesterday got to number one in North America. America. 
there. They overtook M80. It's kind of, um, you know, it's super busted, right? This VLR rankings, because I know I appreciate it must be difficult, but, um, you know, fundamentally, they've got a mix here of the tier one and the tier two teams to such an extent that NRG were only just number one, just ahead of M80, then EG, then Cloud9, then the guards. And as Chet says, the world's most inaccurate ranking. So we'll see what happens to NRG here in a second. There was also a pretty good back and forth between Sentinels and EG, as Sensei can't wait for EG to win Masters and post this because they have some questionable graphics, let's say EG, but then they say this, can't wait for Sent to play LCQ and post this, kind of implying that they're going to fall out, they're going to need some changes, and more than likely it's going to happen at some point, right? So let's dive into some of the series of the day then. I saw there was some discussion before the series began actually between, you know, who the best initiator in the world is, Trig thinks it's Crashies, and um, Zekin thinks it's Leo for sure, and I was really high on Leo even just the other day. Leo's a player that this guy always is there to deliver when you need him. I mean, this team is so stacked, man. It's actually Fnatic are legitimately absurd, but at Leo's a player that when the entire team is going off and dropping ridiculous numbers, he doesn't need to do that much, but um, when he actually is required, then he turns out massively right. That's what you tend to see. And I mean, look at this. This was going into the series of today. Of the top players in the tournament, outside of uh, Kang Kang, right, all of the guys on EG and Fnatic are here. Okay, Boaster is not here and Kang Kang is here, but nine of the 10 top rated players going into this matchup were players from these two respective teams. And what a game it was. I mean, Fnatic bodied them game one. No doubt about that. Lotus was, it looked like, oh wow, EG have been looking so good. And yet they come to Lotus and get smoked 13-3. But game two went to Fracture. And this is what I was really looking forward to, right? Like, just to see, could EG keep up this level on Fracture against the best team in the world? And it turns out they can. I mean, this is a three versus five here from Evil Geniuses that Common Co. somehow find a way to win. Just incredible shots. They're just so good at this map, to be honest. And Alpha was making kills, but it didn't matter. Com gets in this position all the way through the wall here. The spike is not diffused, and that guarantees a 12-9. That swiftly became a 13-9. And all the way to a map three we go. And what a map three it was. I mean, this game is so... Split is so good, man. I mean, Split just delivers these bangers. I say it every time there's a banger on Split, but I swear, man, it happens way more often than you think it should. EG, though, had, I think, a 5v3 this round with such a great chance to get this job done. Fnatic are on the attack here. There was so little time remaining at this point. I mean, look how close this was. Imagine if Ethan could just stay alive a little bit longer. So he kills Boaster Planting, tries to get away, but then gets killed by Leo through the omen smoke for the game. 1.6 seconds on the clock. All he has to do is get around that corner and he's going to be job done for the overtime. But um, yeah, EG will be gutted losing in the way that they did, to be honest. But what a series, man. I mean, this went all the way down to the wire. What a map it was. And as Zab says, that was the craziest map ever. So these two teams... It was great to see a match that really felt like the grand finals, right? I mean, I hope these two teams rematch in the finals, to be honest. I'd love to see it. Leo had just an insane monster series, despite Durka and Demon 1, the bold guys, you know, not having the craziest one. But, um, I mean, yeah, Lotus was 13-3. Like, this was just completely domination. But then 13-9 on Fracture the other way. And then this 13-11 on Split, man. EG will feel like they had it in the palm of their hands to take it to overtime. Now, even if it went overtime, I would still have put my money on Fnatic to win because they are the best team in the world. And it feels like at this point, everyone is fighting to get second place, right? You know, everyone's fighting for the chance to lose to Fnatic in the finals, but uh, yeah, wow, what a series. The scary thing is, I think, for the competitors that now Fnatic are in the finals, as the team from the winner's bracket, they get to ban two maps in the finals. They get to choose what maps are played and not played. So they can ban Pearl and they can ban Fracture, right? Is what I'd probably expect Fnatic to do. And then EG would have to win three maps of maps that Fnatic are basically dominant on, you know, they like to bind and Lotus and all these other ones that they will play. So that is scary, but honestly, it might not even be EG in the finals. It might be Paper X because these guys came to play and somehow a non-America's team actually beat an America's team on Pearl, which has never happened before. And it happened thanks to this man, Cigarettes. Something is not there. No problem at all. And this is the key moment that everybody is talking about this morning. This round's well into overtime. Here we are on Pearl and it felt like it was going to go NRG's way. Some gets one kill. There is at this point 10 seconds on the clock. He can see the spike. There is no chance at this point, and he knows it at this point, that um, cigarettes can get the spike and plant it today. There's no way. All he's got to do is run away, but he stays around one second too long at this point. And I mean, probably two seconds too long. And now he runs away with eight seconds on the clock. 
but at this point he can probably still get around the corner if he wants to. He can probably still get around the corner. He drops the, the harbour smoke as well, so he can definitely get away if he wants to. Five seconds on the clock. Cigarettes has no play other than to run at him. All Som has to do is stay alive, and he pulls out the shorty close range, and with 1.5 seconds on the clock, Cigarettes comes through the smoke and takes him down for the game. I mean, that was, you know, people are saying, oh, don't blame Som too much, but this was a serious misplay. Like, let's not beat around the bush here. Deep into overtime, there's no time at this point. I mean, he should know right now. There's no way that he can plant the spike. He's just seen it. It can't possibly be retrieved and planted in time. Just run away. Stays around two seconds too long. Doesn't use the harbour smoke properly. Gets stuck in the corner and, um, you know, eventually goes down. And this is just one of those situations where, I mean, he was obviously gutted about it and I'm sure he's beating himself up about it, right? They had to regain. They lost that map 15-13. They did bounce back on the next map here on Lotus and then it was sent to Binds. And to be fair for NRG, you've got to think that you go to Binds game three against Paper X without something. You've got to find a way to win, but it doesn't happen. Paper X bring it back. It was a close fall. I think it was 8-5 at one time in favor of NRG, but Paper X bring it back. I mean, Cigarettes did such a great job. And in fairness, right, like NRG were sketchy a lot of this tournament and it continued right here. They also went for Chamber on this map. Like, Artis was on the Chamber, which I thought was very confusing, to be honest. And in the end, it's not good enough. They go down on Bind. I'm sure they'll feel like they should have won anyway, but some reckons that, like, lost us the series. Sorry, especially because of that play map one. If they win that, they probably win it. But having said that, right, Som was, you know, did very well over the series, right? I mean, he had a great map one up to that point. was 24 in 19. It was just that misplay that, unfortunately, will go down in the memory. Lotus was pretty dominant for them. Som had a great bounce back on the Omen. And then Bind was 13-11 at the other way with, to be honest, Crashies wasn't really appearing that much in this series. He had a really tough time, to be honest, on the sky. Forsaken was great on the other side. And honestly, Ardis on the chamber was pretty questionable. So yeah, wow. That leaves us in a real interesting position where NRG have lost. They're out of the tournament. Their chance will come at Champions. Paper X go on. They will play EG in a couple of days' time to now set up the grand finals against Fnatic. Remarkable stuff. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.